we're getting into <laughs> some really kind of intimate details here. Hey folks, it's Carrie from Pretty Neat. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here to my channel, welcome. I share videos here every week about organizing and decluttering your home and adopting a minimalist mindset. So I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and stick around. In today's video, I wanna share five things that I own that I think have been great minimalist purchases for me. Now, whether you consider these things minimalist or not is really gonna vary depending on your perspective. I'm defining these things as minimalist purchases because they have helped me save time, save space in my home. They've maybe helped me save money over the long haul, or they've helped me to reduce waste. So those were the criteria, and you may or may not agree. I'll be interested to hear what you think, but here we go with my five great minimalist purchases that have really brought value to my life. The first minimalist purchase that I wanna talk about are my food storage containers. I just recently upgraded some of these and I have purchased some Pyrex glass containers that have a plastic top. What I found was that I was doing a lot more cooking while being at home during the quarantine and I really needed some additional containers. I was using these really cheap ones that are meant to be kind of disposable. And I am trying to reduce my plastics and the amount of toxins in my products and in the things that I use. So glass is really great in this regard. I think it's important to note that minimalist purchases are often things that are of good quality that are gonna stand the test of time, but they might be more expensive with the initial investment. And that is certainly the case for these. I got this set of these five containers and they cost about 25, 27 bucks. I got them off of Macy's. I'll link to them down below. They are really serving their purpose. I like the size. I like that they're square. I have another set of these that are round and they just don't fit in the fridge as easily. Now I'm a professional organizer and most of the homes that I see the food storage container cabinet or drawer is usually a very non-minimalist place. There's usually a huge mess of things in there. I try to think about this in terms of how many containers of leftovers I might have at a given time and think about keeping just that many and not you know, 20 or 30. Obviously it's gonna depend on your household and how much food you need to store at a given time. But I think spending a little bit more on a small set of good quality containers like these glass ones is gonna be a good investment in the future. You won't have to replace these and they are gonna serve you for years. Another kitchen item that I consider to be a great minimalist purchase that I've made is my knife set. I got this, I really can't remember how long ago I purchased the set. It's just four knives. I really was attracted to this because it's very basic. It just has the items that I need for food prep and it doesn't have a bunch of other ones that are just not useful to me. I feel like most knife sets are really big and bulky and they have a ton of different pieces. And this one I would say is a minimalist knife set. It basically has these two larger chopping knives. It has a smaller kind of paring knife and then it has a serrated blade that's great for cutting bread and rolls and that type of thing. This set serves me for pretty much every thing that I need to cut in the kitchen and it doesn't have any fluff. It takes up a small footprint on the countertop. Another thing that I like about this is I think that a good quality set of kitchen knives can take the place of a lot of gadgets. So you might go through your kitchen gadget drawer and ask yourself if everything in there is really necessary or if some of those things could be replaced 
by just using a knife. And in a lot of cases, that's true. I find that the knife set that I've purchased serves my purpose as well. If you are a gourmet cook or if you make some really specialized things, you might need some different pieces. This particular purchase has been a great minimalist purchase for me. I don't know if this particular set is still available. I'll look for something similar and try to link it down below. My next minimalist purchase that I wanna talk about might seem a little strange to people, but it is a menstrual cup. Now, you probably weren't expecting to click on this video and hear about a menstrual cup, but here we are. I use the Diva Cup. I have used one of these, I can't even say how many years it's been. I switched over to a menstrual cup a long, long time ago. People often say a product is life-changing and it almost never lives up to that. The menstrual cup for me is life-changing. It is so much more convenient. It works better than other things that I've used, you know, pads, tampons, whatever. And I love that there's no waste with this, okay? You buy one and it will last you for years. You might be kind of weirded out by this. You might think it's gross to reuse a menstrual product, especially something that you use internally but these are typically made of silicone. The Diva Cup is silicone, and that means you can wash it, you can, I, I boil this every month to disinfect it, and I have had no issues. The cool thing about a menstrual cup, as opposed to tampons, is it's not absorbent. Because it's not absorbent, it doesn't dry out your tissues, it's not irritating. This is maybe a little more information <laughs> than you needed about me, but I cannot recommend this product enough. They are relatively inexpensive. They last for years. I have saved so much money on feminine hygiene products because I use the menstrual cup. And I, I just, I wish that more people were aware of this and used it. I will say that there is a learning curve with the menstrual cup and it was a little more challenging to learn to use it than with other products that I had used in the past. I would say that if you've tried a menstrual cup and it's leaked or it's been hard to insert or hard to remove, give it another try. It really took me several cycles of using it to kind of get the hang of it and to figure out the best way to insert and remove and the whole process. It can be a little tricky at the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it's like seamless and I have not gone back. It, it is a life-changing product. I recommend it. It saves waste. It saves a ton of money. If you're a person that menstruates, try it out. The next minimalist purchase that has really served me well is a disc-bound notebook system. Now, if you are a person that doesn't really use notebooks or isn't really a paper person, this is probably not for you. But if you are a person who is super into stationery, if you use notebooks, if your preferred method of note taking is on paper with a pen, I think this is a great solution. I have always been a person who's been kind of obsessed with paper and stationery, and I do paper crafting, and that's that's another topic for another video. I always hated how um, other types of notebooks were so inflexible. So you might buy a notebook and you might use a few pages of it, and then you don't use the rest and now you have these notes in this like partially used notebook. That always bugged me. It seemed wasteful. It's hard to organize the pages in your notebook because you can't take them out and put them back in. Like once you've written on a page in a typical spiral bound notebook or in a book bound notebook, it's there on that page forever. And it can be really hard to find information that you've written down in notebooks for this reason, because you have to basically just flip through and find it. The cool thing about a disc bound notebook system is that the pages come out and go back in. 
There are a number of companies that make products that are compatible with this disc bound system. The way they work is they have this weird little punch along the bound edge that looks kind of like a mushroom. It allows you to basically pop the pages in and take them out. You can buy disc bound notebooks from Staples. Their line is called Arc. There's a line at Office Depot or Office Max and theirs is called Tool. There's an online um, company called Levenger that has a disc bound system. Theirs is called Circa. I use a paper planner that is also compatible with the disc bound system. It's made by a company called Happy Planner. Happy Planner is not a minimalist thing in my life, I will admit. I'm into kind of paper crafting and decorative planning. I won't get into all that in this video, but the Happy Planner makes paper planners in this disc bound system. They also make notebooks as well. So I'm gonna link to all of these down below, but the important thing to note is that all of these systems allow you to take the pages out of the notebook. You can rearrange them. Most of them make dividers for their notebooks so you can kind of move the pages around. You can group them into different sections. It just makes it so helpful to be able to rearrange your papers in a way that makes sense to you and not have them just bound in a book where you can never change that. I think that this system meets the criteria for a minimalist purchase because as your notebooks get full, you can pull the pages out. You can basically reuse the cover and the discs of the notebook and just replace the paper in it. So I find this super useful. It allows me to stay more organized and basically configure the notebooks in a way that makes the most sense for me. The last minimalist purchase that I want to talk about is more of a category of items and I'm going to call it DIY beauty items. So what I'm talking about here is basically doing your own beauty routine. Now, again, this isn't going to apply to everyone. I'm a person that really likes makeup and hair and doing all of that stuff. What I found is that it was important for me to have, you know, my hair colored regularly, to have my nails done regularly but I didn't want to pay for those services. Salon services can be really expensive, as we all know. I used to get my hair cut and colored, and it was a lot of money for those appointments, especially when I was getting my color done. I got to a point where I just was looking for a place that I could save money, and I started looking into hair color options that I could do at home, and I found this company called Madison Reed. This is not a sponsored video, but I am really a fan of their product. It works great, it's easy to use, and it, most of all, it doesn't damage my hair. So I've been coloring my own hair with Madison Reed for, I would say, maybe three years, and I've been really happy with it. I use a combination of their permanent hair dye and their uh, temporary, all of that lasts me really well for about the same amount of time as my salon color used to last. So not only is this a place that I'm saving money, but it saves me time as well because the whole process of going to the salon is usually really lengthy, especially if you're getting color done. And I also, as an introvert, I. I don't really love the process of sitting there and having to make chit chat. Again, if you're a stylist, hats off to you. You have a tough job. There are days that I'm just not in the mood to interact. And you know, if you're sitting in a salon chair for a couple hours, you pretty much need to talk to the person. Doing my hair at home, it just, I don't have to deal with that anymore. The other thing that I do at home is my own nails. I have been polishing my own nails since I was a child, literally. This was something that I loved to do when I was a kid. In recent years, I've been able to find a lot of people like on YouTube who do tips about doing your own nails. And I've learned a lot of things about doing my nails that has really helped me 
do a much more professional looking manicure and also one that lasts a lot longer. I keep a stash of stuff. Um, I give myself a limit because again, nail polish is one of those things that I can buy on impulse a lot, but I basically have this one container that I store all of my nail polish in. And once that container starts getting full, I have to weed some of them out. So I've given myself a boundary on how much of that stuff that I can own. And again, I find this a fun activity. It's kind of a self-care thing for me. I think that I'm saving a lot of money, even though I have to buy the supplies. It's a lot cheaper to do my nails at home than it would be to go to the salon and have them done. I think a lot of this comes down to what you wanna spend your time and money on, what is valuable enough for you to dedicate space in your home to certain items. And so these are five things that have really been valuable for me and have helped me save either a little bit of money, a little bit of time, space in my home, or they've helped me to reduce waste. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button. It really helps my channel out. And don't forget to subscribe. I share new videos here every week about organizing and decluttering your home and adopting a minimalist mindset. Talk to you soon.